Uh, thanks everyone uh, for coming as always. Um, I'd like to start by by thanking Alvin Gentry for uh, his contributions this year and stepping up uh, mid-season. Um, of course, uh, recognize and thank our players um, for their efforts and, and work throughout the year. Um, and uh, certainly also would like to thank and recognize uh, my entire staff. Uh, you know, we have uh, a lot of people here that do a lot of work behind the scenes. And, um, you know, I, I'd just like to publicly thank uh, everybody who, who contributes here. Um, obviously, it's been a tough season. Um, and certainly we want to be playing it this time of year. Um, and not having this press conference, but uh, we certainly have reasons to be optimistic, I think, um, as we continue to, to build and uh, we're confident in the, in the foundation that we're building here. Um, certainly more work to be done, um, but we'll continue to be aggressive and, um, and get this place uh, back where it belongs. So with that, I'll take questions. Hey, Monty, uh, just when you look at what you guys were able to accomplish once you brought uh, Demonis in and kind of the shift that that represented, how do you feel that that went? And does, did that, I don't know, the confidence in that move going forward, was it a kind of a double down on some of those thoughts? Yeah, with, with Domas coming in, I think we, we expected him to be great, and um, he was even better. So uh, very excited about, about what Domas brings, not just on the floor, which we all see, but um, getting to know him, the person, uh, his family, his his love for the game, and his excitement to be here. Um, all that stuff is exactly what we want to bring into the organization. And so now it's our job to continue building out around him. Monty, does having Domas and De'Aaron, does that make life a little easier going into this offseason? Do you at least have two building blocks? Yeah, absolutely. And that, we, we talked about that at the, at the deadline, right? That um, bringing in... Um, Domas having De'Aaron, uh, the Fox and the Ox, you know, they, they've already, like, from day one, hit the ground running. I think De'Aaron averaged almost 30 points a game with, with Domas, right? And so um, that's a fantastic foundation. And we've seen other guys. Harrison had so, some of his biggest games with those two um, together. Um, Davion, Trey, all, all these guys, I think, uh, those two make make others better. We obviously need to continue to find more pieces around them, um, but certainly having those two as a foundation, we continue we we can continue to build on. And we haven't seen um, you haven't had your own coaching hire yet. Um, so two years in, we still haven't seen what your type of style or what you're looking for. Do you have any ideas that you can share with us about what you're kind of hoping to bring in here as, as the next head coach? Yeah, I think really it's we're, what we're going to do is we're going to run like every decision we make, we're going to run a comprehensive and very process driven um, coaching search. And we are going to let that run its course. We're going to take as long as we need to find uh, the correct person to lead this this organization, um, the, the team on the floor. And um, I'm excited to see what, you know, the, the people that we that we talk to, what their vision is for the team as well. When you talk about vision uh, as far as philosophy, because um, I know a year ago, almost a year ago from this uh, in this situation, um, you you was a little distraught, a little upset. Uh, what, what about bringing in someone you know with defensive qualities and stuff like that? Or you just I know you're probably looking for the full package, but uh, as far as addressing some of the uh, issues that's been going on with this uh, organization on the floor, uh, defense has been. A, a, a humongous, monumental uh, issue. Uh, are you looking for a coach who has that passion, that vision in mind? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not putting any um, any particulars in on that. Like I said, we're going to run this process. We all know what we need to get to. There's certain things that need to be fixed, um, but um, there's also multiple ways to win this league. We want the coaching candidates that we do bring in to bring their own style, tell us how they want to do this. We'll talk with them. Um, and ultimately, we're going to bring in somebody who's going to win, however, however they, they and we want to do that together. Yeah, Monty, yesterday De'Aaron talked that he thinks uh, most winning teams are kind of built the same. There's two, three, maybe four guys, and then a lot of length and shooting after that. Um, where do you guys feel like you're at in that process, if you agree? Do you need to add more to that two or three, or maybe focus more on the length and shooting? 
Yeah, I think we, uh, as when I answer James' question, um, you know, I think there's there's lots of guys that fit with with De'Aaron and Domas. They're they're fun and and easy to play with. Um, I think we certainly have players on this team that fit great with them, and we'll continue to go and uh, like we do every off season through draft, trade, and free agency. We'll continue to try to add others. Um, you mentioned it. I think shooting. You know, we can clearly acknowledge will be a huge priority. It's a priority for every team, but certainly around those two guys, uh, shooting will be a big one. You know, length, athleticism, versatility, we, we've talked about all that um, as well. And um, obviously you want the whole package, uh, but shooting, shooting will be a, a big priority for us. And then when it comes to your draft philosophy, you know, you mentioned Davion Mitchell being, in your, in your eyes, best player available last year. Can you just kind of define what, best player available means, like whether it means long-term throughout their career or how they can immediately impact a team? Yeah, I think for us, the, the draft is um, one of the few times that you can add, you know, usually a, a younger player, right? Often guys, when they reach free agency, um, you know, they're, they're multiple years into their career. Um, and so, you know, somebody like Davion, um, already an impactful winning player, and then, you uh, the work ethic, the character, all that to continue to grow. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't know if it's you – know, we want a guy who's going to impact from day one and, and hopefully for years and years to come. Um, so, you know, it's hard to give maybe a very specific answer there. But, yeah, we want the player that's going to come in and, um, you know, and help us, uh, you know, not just for one year or not just five years from now. So uh, best player for us is, is the guy that's going to do that regardless of – position and, and different things like that. Hi, Monty. Um, on the, the coaching search, is, um, is previous head coaching experience going to be part of the criteria? I know you said you, you want to kind of leave it open and, and maybe a little bit undefined, but, but do you, are you looking for someone who's done this before? No, I appreciate the question. And, um, you know, I think there's a lot of characteristics that um, coaches will bring to the table. We've seen successful coaches from many different backgrounds. So, again, we're not going to put any any specifics or priorities on that. Um, we're going to interview a, um, you know, uh, we're, like I said, it's going to be very comprehensive. Comprehensive. We're going to have a lot of, uh, you know, people that we're going to talk to, and we want to we want to let them um, tell us what they're excited about about the team, as well as you know, certainly our our own thoughts. And um, on. Looking at the backcourt uh, with Fox and Davion, is that a pairing that you think could could work together as a, a starting backcourt, or do you more envision kind of a situation where you've got like you know one in the starting lineup and the other is a you know maybe Davion is a big punch off the bench long term? Yeah, I think both. Well, first of all, as you know, the coach the coach will make those decisions on who starts and and everything. We we've seen them play together, which I think is really what you're asking. And um, you know, I think both guys. Uh, you know, complement each other. Obviously, both are both are great with the ball, but um, Davion, we saw, you know, defensively is you know can guard both both guard positions. He can get switched on to bigger guys and and cause all sorts of problems. And then, you know, really at the end of the year, we were able to see Davion continue to take off. His shooting improved. He just became more comfortable out there, as many rookies do. Um, they'll continue to find ways. Uh, Foxy can score. Uh, you know, with me and you out there. Uh, so um, he, he's going to find a way to continue to do that. So I think they'll certainly play together some, and, and it's just great to have, especially in this league, you know, two guards who who can create for themselves and others. We saw with, with some of Davion's assist totals uh, down the stretch, I think he had a 17 and a, and a 15. Um, you know, Foxy had, I think, average, average seven-plus assists um, the second half of the year. So um, I think we'll continue to see that. Hey, Monty, uh, going back to Fox and Sabonis really quick, I believe we only saw about 15 games of them together. Both of them finished the season out. Does that feel a little bit like lost time, or do you feel confident that the offseason training camp, that's enough time for them to be connecting on all cylinders come game one next season? Yeah, we addressed this at the, at the deadline, which is there's only so many opportunities to add impact players. So we had a chance to add Domas, and we did it. And um, we're excited that we got to see 15 games together um, and, and really see, I think, Foxy at his best, uh, certainly see what Domas can do. Obviously, we would have wished they would have played even more together. But um, like I said at the time, that this was not about just this year. Uh, we got multiple years ahead. Um, and so these guys are going to get – they're going to get an offseason together. They're already, you know, bonding with them, each other and the rest of their teammates. Um, so it, we, I view it as we got a head start as if we would have done it later. And so we're, we're excited to see them get 
you know, certainly a full off season under their belt and, you know, really take off next, next season from day one. Uh, realizing you haven't been in this job <laughs> all that long, but you've been here in a little bit, is there anything you know now that you didn't know then about this organization that maybe you wish you had known or, I don't know, looking, just having like revisionist history, looking back and saying, you know, boy, I wish I had known this or anything about that? Uh, I would say, as I've said multiple times, the number one thing that since I've come in here um, that you kind of know from the outside, but you don't realize until you're here is the fan base. It's just unbelievable. I was just in uh, Phoenix in the last game of the year, a disappointing season, and there was 25 Sacramento fans that, that traveled down for the game. So, um, and, and I think we saw, uh, I don't even know, we had eight or nine home games after the trade deadline, but like that was fantastic. Like the crowd was um, invested in, and so, so excited about, um, you know, how we were playing. So that's the number one thing. And, uh, you know, it just, it drives me, it drives us to, to continue to, to build this thing out and, um, you know, and get to a point where this time next year, like that place is packed for a playoff game. And then just with, when it comes to the coaching search, it sounded as if comprehensive, all that, you know, the process it doesn't sound like you have an ideal time that you want to have one by, or am I reading that wrong? No, you're, you're right. We're, look, we, we have an off season. We have time. Uh, the number one thing is that we find the right person to come in here and, uh, you know, partner with, with me and, and the rest of our staff and, and get this get this thing where it needs to get to. So we're going to take our time, um, and whenever we find that, that person, we'll, we'll go ahead and do it. Yeah, Monty, I did see a photo on, uh, I think it was Blake Westcott who runs one of these uh, social network pages, the photo in Phoenix and that, so that, just to let you know uh, about that. And, yes, the fan base here is absolutely fabulous. But um, let me just go back to the uh, the trade, you know, bringing in, you know, the, the six guys. Um, the Bonas, of course, you know, and then da uh, Dante and then Trey Lyles and then the other three players. But I want to start with uh, Dante and Trey Lyles, who was pretty much a, a surprising player. Uh, just wanted to get your thoughts on, uh, you know, Trey coming in and he cracking in the lineup. And uh, uh, was he on your radar, you know, before that? And uh, Dante, I know his situation is uh, pretty iffy, sticky right now with uh, his contract situation, but he definitely wants to be here. Could you talk about those two Pacific, uh, Pacific players, Dante and uh, Trey Lyles? Yeah, Trey, um, <clears throat> I think it was great to see Trey down the stretch. Uh, as, as we've been talking about, we're looking for – for shooting, right? And Trey is, you know, somebody who combines the size, you know, of a power forward with the ability to shoot like a guard. And uh, he had some huge games, not just shooting the ball, but I think he had 18 rebounds in a game. Um, you know, so I think Trey, he just, he just has a solid way about him. He does everything, um, you know, well on the court, and he was a great fit. Um, it was, it was really, you know, I, I would say we cer certainly somebody that we've looked at, but you know, pleasantly surprised um, with his play. Um, Dante, of course, I think we see what Dante brings. We traded for him twice, uh, as you all know. Um, we love a lot of what he brings to the floor, and uh, it was it was great to see and hear Dante's comments after the last game about what you know his experience in Sacramento has been and what he wants to bring to the city. So, um, both those guys, uh, again, we wish. Uh, we had more wins down the stretch, but it was good to see what you know what they can contribute. Both the Aaron and Demontis yesterday talked about wanting to be involved or kept in the loop with this coaching hire. What's your philosophy on player involvement in that kind of decision and taking their opinions into account? Well, it was uh, you know those two. Um, obviously, De'Aaron and I have you know been together uh, now for a couple of years. Domas just a few months, but it's been you know great to to get to know him and continue to build that relationship. Um, they've told me privately, and they told you guys publicly the the confidence they have in me and and my group, and that's reciprocal. You know, we brought you know Domas in and and Foxy. Um, obviously, we signed to the extension last year. Like you know, we have we have every confidence in them that they're gonna be the uh, the pillars of, of what we're building here so um, and certainly their input and their their thoughts on on the game and uh, coach and all the things that um, you know will go into getting us you know into the playoffs and that winning winning atmosphere is is what we want so we're going to continue to build those relationships and uh, it's been fantastic into getting to know Domas uh, recently and um, we'll continue to do that Monty we're 16 years into the playoff drought just do you feel the pressure to fix this thing quickly and to get this thing back on the right path for next season? Yeah, this is uh, 
I think the other thing about coming coming here, right, is you know this is going to be my my third season, um, but we always want to acknowledge, right? Like you said, you said we, right? Like the the Sacramento community and fan base, it has been 16 years, right? And so for us, we want to acknowledge that. Um, what we don't want to do is let that cloud our judgment. We're going to be ag aggressive, like I talked about. We we have to remain disciplined, right? There's no, um, you know, there's, there's, there's no easy button to go and fix this right away. So, um, when those opportunities are there, we're going to pounce like we did at the deadline, and we are going to continue to look for those. Um, as far as the pressure, I think it's, you know, I would say it's like a good pressure that, yeah, we want to get back there as soon as we can, but we need to do it in a way that we stay there. We continue to grow. This is not a one-year, you know, blip that we, you know, completely mortgage the future for. We're gonna we're gonna do this in a way that we're already building a foundation. I think it started at the deadline, and we're gonna continue to to do that so that we can have a long run in the playoffs. Okay, we'll do two more on the zone. Christos, go ahead. Uh, hello, McNair. Thank you for your time. First of all, uh, a super question for you. What makes you confident about the first one? The first part is what makes you confident about the foundation that you have with Yaron, uh, Domas, Davion, Harrison, and all those guys? What makes you confident about the next season? And the second part is what you would like to add to this foundation to make the the, the Kings a playoff caliber team? Yeah, what makes what makes me confident is is, uh, you know, what those guys did in spurts. Um, you know, obviously they weren't as healthy uh, as we would have liked down the stretch, but what we saw, um, a lot of positives. Um, you know, one thing that maybe, I, I think we all see Domas as passing and scoring, but one thing that flew under the radar, I think, is um, his defensive rebounding and how that shored up our defense. I think we were top 10 um, defensive rebounding uh, when he played. Uh, and then again, you know, Foxy, like I said, he was, you know, averaging almost 30. Harrison had some of his biggest games. Davion had a, a fantastic closing stretch. Um, but we also know that we got to continue to add and, and that shooting is going to be a priority, like I said. Um, you know, with those two guys, especially uh, De'Aaron and Domas, um, there's going to be a lot of pressure on the defense to focus on those two. We need, you know, the other guys on the floor to be able to take full advantage and, and hit those open shots when they come. Okay, sorry. Uh, Monty, is Alan Gentry um, still expected to be part of the Kings organization? And I have a follow-up. Yeah, no, appreciate appreciate the question. Um, you know, I will say Alvin, um, you know, stepped up midseason. Uh, really appreciate that. He's He's been uh, – you know, a great leader on and off the court um, through his 30 plus years of coaching. You know, Alvin's got, um, you know, great spirit and knowledge and uh, just a fantastic way about him. So um, I won't speculate on that, uh, on, on what his role will be going forward, but I would like to, you know, compliment Alvin and, and thank him for that. And my, and my follow-up is what about uh, his coaching staff? Do you expect to keep any or some of them, or are you going to allow the new coach to uh, name his staff? Yeah, so um, I spoke with our entire coaching staff yesterday. Um, obviously a difficult situation for them, um, but I'll, I'll tell you what, what I told them, which is that, you know, we're going to run this coaching search. Um, when that coach is in place, then we'll work with that coach to uh, to fill out the remainder of his staff. So, um, you know, obviously a tough situation, but um, that's going to be our process. And we're, you know, frankly excited to uh, to get started on that and the rest of our offseason because, um, you know, I think the foundation we're building here, continue to build, is, is going to be something that's going to get us where we need to go.